What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Volby record, Seal the Deal and Let's Boogie, out this past Friday, June 3rd. Volbeat's really a key band in the hard rock and metal world at the moment because they're one of the few genuine contenders to be that next major arena rock band. There are so few of those. Volbeat has the potential to be one of them as showcased on their last two records, Beyond Hell Above Heaven and Outlaw Gentlemen and Shady Ladies, which struck this near flawless balance between like accessible hard rock and old school metal. On these two records, they paired enormous hooks and simple song structures with some genuinely heavy riffing and soloing to the point where they bring enough metal credibility to dodge that dreaded radio rock tag, but they have an accessibility to the average music listener. Seal the Deal and Let's Boogie is the band's sixth album and a pretty pivotal one considering the two albums that they're following up. They have enormous hype behind them and they really have an opportunity to take another leap forward. If all goes well, they're poised to become like somewhere between the Foo Fighters and Five Finger Death Punch, both stylistically and probably in terms of ticket sales. So this release was preceded by three singles, all three of which I actually wrote up on a WordPress blog post that I'll link down in the description in case you guys are curious. So first one was The Devil's Bleeding Crown back in early April. This is a song that features a main riff that is stadium-sized, if not a bit run-of-the-mill, and by run-of-the-mill I mean the exact same rhythm as the verses in the, in the band's song, A Warrior's Call. The chorus feels pretty familiar as well, and all this song's grooves already exist on countless other rock albums, but cut, cutting it some slack, my overall verdict was that, despite its redundancy, I really like that Wolf Mother on steroids vibe, and perhaps we'll forgive that awful, that completely cheesy clapping section. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. The Bliss was single number two, and it immediately got that Lola Montez part two tag because of its similarity to that track off their last record. But, I mean, after a few lessons, didn't bother me as much. I like the track. It's essentially a summery love song with a bunch of sugary vocal harmonies and a pretty cool banjo section that, for my money, compensates for the lack of originality. Then finally, there was Seal the Deal, I guess the album's pseudo title track, and this one gets an A plus for me. This is my favorite of the three singles. It's probably the catchiest chorus on the whole record. It's got these punchy guitars underneath to accentuate it. There's some real fat bass in this song, whether it's the pre-chorus, the bridge, or the solo section. And just the killer key change at that last chorus to just send the song off. It's definitely, I've been listening to this album for five days pretty constantly, and this is the song that has been in my head the most. But of course, following these three singles, there's the rest of the album to fucking discuss. In addition to The Devil's Bleeding Crown and The Bliss, I also like Marie Laveau and I like The Gates of Babylon. I think these four songs together comprise a pretty strong opening to the record. Gates of Babylon is one of many tracks on Seal of Deal and Let's Boogie that basically is centered around a belting chorus. It's got groove metal-ish verses, and it's got this post-chorus melody that really brings an outlaw gentleman vibe to it. But for me, the highlight of the whole song is that brief, melodic guitar solo, which I just think is really tasteful. As for Marie Laveau, it utilizes that sweet blend of acoustic and electric guitars that kind of enriches this bright, bubbling chorus. It's really in the same vein as a song like Cape of Our Hero from Volbeat's last record, and since it's only the second track on the album, its derivative nature and predictable song structure didn't irk me yet. Which unfortunately brings me to this album's glaring flaw, which, I mean, if you've heard the record, you can probably guess what I'm about to say. Much of Seal the Deal and Let's Boogie is mind-numbingly repetitive. Just listen to Let It Burn. Or Black Rose, which while Danko Jones' guest vocal performance is a great compliment to Michael Poulsen's singing, there's just not enough movement in the guitars underneath to add any spice. Like many tracks on this record, this song's power is resting solely on vocals, because they're sitting atop such a bland, 
musical bed. Mary Jane Kelly, too. This is really where I ran out of patience, because by now, this was deep in the record. This is a five-minute and 40-second long song. You see that, especially in the style that Volbeat plays, and you assume, okay, they're going to probably take this in some sort of adventurous direction with that extra time. They have to. But the song just fucking dragged. On a majority of this album, I'm hearing something very safe. It feels like a lot of this was just meant for surface, immediate enjoyment, which is fine. But for me personally, records which I can dig deeper into and extract more from over time make for more rewarding albums. Seal a Deal and Let's Boogie is not one of them. And how many vocal melodies, in particular chorus melodies, are just going to kind of blend together. Michael reaches for a lot of the same notes in a lot of the same patterns on this record. And listen, none of this is offensively bad. Most of it is quite enjoyable. But after a while, this repetition becomes a bit of kind of a dull, throbbing headache. And let's just point out that Let It Burn, Mary Jane Kelly, Black Rose, and The Bliss all begin with this similar kind of played out palm muted guitar pattern. In general, there's really just a lot of basic rudimentary riffing on this record. Then there's the two completely unnecessary cover songs, Rebound and Battleship Chains. I mean, they could have worked maybe as some fun B-sides. Now with Battleship Chains, I had never heard the original before hearing this record. But with Rebound, I can tell you that the original by Teenage Bottle Rocket shits all over the Volbeat version. I mean, they just sucked the life out of that song. They sucked the punkiness. They sucked the attitude. They sucked everything out of it. I Cover or no cover, I can't believe this is the same band that worked with King Diamond on their last record. As for their version of the song Battleship Chains, I mean, it feels danceable. You could probably put this song on in one of those dumb country bars in like Boston or Providence or some other northern city where anything bluesy or twangy feels appropriate to suburban white girls who want to feel cultured. I'm sure they would enjoy it, but nothing really in the song for me. Though I do, of course, love the use of the slide guitar. I can never pass up hearing some great slide guitar. But I can definitely praise the mix on this record and the overall production. There's a lot of just bellowing bottom end, and the guitar tone is great despite being, I guess, slightly neutered to kind of streamline the overall sound. And Rob Caggiano, as usual, delivers some great leads, my favorite of which is on the track You Will Know, which, along with the closer Lois Crossroad, might make up the best one-two punch on the entire album. You Will Know is just a great track that prominently features this real pretty, real emotive, harmonized guitar lead line. And I love how the drums and the rhythm guitars and the bass are so agile and kind of shifting around to support this lovely melody. And Lois Crossroads is a strong closer that managed to be distinctive on an album that's full of things that are not that. It's got a lot of energy. It's got this bridge section with these thunderous toms that then segue into a rock solid guitar riff. It's got some of my favorite little cymbal, ride cymbal noodling. Whenever you hear that in a metal song, you know it's go time. And then, of course, those bagpipes that come in throw you for a complete loop. I wish there were more left turns on this record like that. Unfortunately, there really aren't. Okay, so overall verdict. I want to make something perfectly clear. Seal the Deal and Let's Boogie is an enjoyable album. A lot of these songs stick in my head. You can put them on in lots of different contexts, whether it's you're going for a nice drive on a Sunday day or you're working out or just hanging out with friends. These songs perform as advertised. Unfortunately, when packaged together, they don't offer a whole lot in the way of something new. And quite frankly, we're getting pretty diminishing returns on the stuff that's old. To be fair, where was there for Volby to go after a phenomenal record like Outlaw Gentlemen and Shady Ladies? Well, they could have continued to push the envelope, or they could have made this, something that's further streamlined, a little bit watered down, and less metal. But on this record, if they were going for catchy, hooky rock music that simply aims to be fun, I mean, they did it. But just to my ears, they sacrificed a lot of the elements that have made them so appealing to me 
on their past couple records. Overall, I like the record. I really like about half the songs. I will continue to support Volbeat on their quest for world rock dominance. But with this one, I'm underwhelmed. Seal the Deal Unless Boogie gets a 6 out of 10 from me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music. And I'll see you guys soon.